Yo, boys and girls, welcome back to The Mere Curse. Mirko's prediction for MPO Indonesia Season 11. That's what we're going to be calling it from now on, by the way. We're just going to be calling every prediction video The Mere Curse. Obviously, like I have pointed out yesterday in the stream, The Mere Curse only comes true when I predict in the venue, okay? So whatever I predict here, it's going to be... Well, I don't know if it's going to be right or not, okay? Because it's <laughs> it's obviously a prediction. Um, just uh, as a recap, Season 10, I predicted Onik and BTR to be the grand finals, uh, to be the grand finalists. And uh, I predicted Onik to win. It wasn't Onik BTR, it was Onik RQ, but Onik did, did win uh, the Season 10 trophy. I also predicted RQ to win Season 9. So I think uh, in the local tournaments so far, I have been pretty accurate. I think for the international tournaments, you should just, you I think just watch the power rankings over the predictions because the power rankings have been very accurate uh, and the predictions have been you know, not as accurate, pretty inaccurate actually. So yeah, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the playoff season 11 prediction video. You guys, before we start the video, before we get into our predictions, can also still vote for all the nominees for MPL Indonesia season 11's awarding ceremony. We have um, all MVP regular season, we have first team jungler, first team roamer, and uh, best talent for Indonesia, and best English talent. If you guys want to help me, you guys can go and vote for me in the comments section down below there's going to be a link and also in the description there is going to be a link to vote so go ahead uh, if you do want to if you don't it's completely fine if you want to vote for uh, you know someone else it's also completely fine as long as you vote just get your votes in there okay uh, and obviously yeah let's address the elephant in the room i am wearing a big Chan jersey deal with it okay no i will try my best not to be biased as i usually do uh, in all my prediction videos and also in my um Awarding. Uh, I think the video that I made early yesterday, the Starcast video, I told you guys all the winners or all the all my picks for the awarding session, all my votes for the awarding session, and uh, I think there was only one Bigatron member there. It was Super Ken that I, uh, you know, voted for because obviously I, I want to keep it objective when it goes to comes to votes and stuff. I think you know the the ones who deserve it should des should get it right. <laughs> it's not like a biased competition, but here again. This is going to be another interesting one. Just a fun fact for you guys before we start. I actually recorded 30 minutes of predictions already earlier before I had to scrap the video because the audio was corrupted. So, yeah, uh, we're coming into that. We're coming into this um, prediction with that in mind, okay? I will try my best to get all the points that I uh, made in the last, well, in the corrupted video, but here. So, let's start, ladies and gentlemen, with the playoff prediction, starting from match number one. Big Turn Alpha versus Alter Ego. Big Turn Alpha had a very stellar second half performance, getting four wins in a row, a four-win streak for Big Turn Alpha to end the season on a very high note. I think with their composition, Saken and Superkin stepping in, it really helped the team find that level of, or, you know, tap into the potential that was already... Uh, kind of there. Uh, have, the foundation of this team has been built very early on with solid drafts by Aldo, Paulo Expert, and obviously the golden boy, Ray's boy. Uh, the man who is on a tournament win streak himself, and maybe he can bring Big John Alpha to win MPL Season 11. If he does, I don't know what to say. But yeah, that's kind of Big John Alpha's thing. I think um, what makes Big John Alpha so scary right now, especially when it comes down to the playoffs in Season 11, is the fact that they can carry from almost every single lane. I, I would actually say that, right? I think every single one of them can be playmakers. Every single one of them can be uh, given that task of carrying the team. Even Cerezo, the XP laner who usually plays weak side of the map with his Esmeralda pick, with his very with his weak side picks, right? He is the guy who is very independent in lane and he tries to just distract and play the macro game to fill all the holes for the team and to give space, to create space for the rest of the team. He, as well, very, very good roamer. I think he is the X Factor. He's also the main shot caller, but I would I, I call him the X Factor because in losing games for Bigger Alpha, this man can absolutely pop off to bring the game back for his team. And that's why I'm saying almost every single member from this team can carry. I think Saken in the gold lane, not as flashy as other gold laners, but is very solid, very good, and has the fundamentals down. I think he's a very safe gold laner, and it really works for this team because with a lot of star players, a lot of flashy players like Key, Moreno, and um, Super Ken. I think you need some people to be stable. And I think these two side laners for Bigger Turn Alpha are really stable. Not to, not to say that they can't carry, but 
They are very stable and they play very safe. With that, they have three main weapons that they can carry with, right? Super Ken, Moreno, and Saken. So very multidimensional and drafts have been stellar. In the second half, we really got to see the bigger turn off of full potential of this roster. And I really hope that we get to see that again. Hopefully, we get to see a better version of that because they're up against Alter Ego, a team that I think a lot of pro players have said many times before that they would um, not want to face. They're probably the least uh, that they, the, the team that they do not want to face the most, technically, for a lot of these pro players because Alter Ego are that volatile. Uh, when they're good, they're really good. When they're bad, okay, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think for Alter Ego, it's kind of the same. Uh, Kind of the same story with Alter Ego and BTR. Unfortunately for Alter Ego, though, they were really struggling in the first leg. Bigger Turn Alpha at least were able to get a few uh, match victories in the first leg. That's why they ended up third place in the regular season uh, in the second half with their phenomenal performance. But Alter Ego didn't have that same uh, you know, success in the first leg. They actually lost, I think, all of their games, all of their matches, uh, only winning against Rebellion Zion, if I'm not mistaken. And after the second leg started, that's when they really started to get that steam with Nino coming back into the gold lane, no Rizal. And again, it's kind of similar where they found their jam. Both these teams, Bigatron and Alter Ego, beat Geek Slate. So both these teams are very, very scary. And for Alter Ego, I honestly feel like this team is good, right? Obviously, to make it to the playoffs, you must, you have to be a good team. But for Alter Ego, I would say it's a bit more one-dimensional. Uh, one you can say, yes, they have great players. And I agree with you guys, uh, if you if that's the point that you guys want to make, right? Nino is still their main carry, though. There's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to, you know, work around it. I think for Alter Ego, they should play with their strengths. And their strength lies mainly on Nino. If Nino gets a comfort hero, if Nino is given the space to carry, he carries the team. Literally. He will take the team. He will take the entire team, put, him, put the entire team on his back and carry the game. And that's what we've kind of seen from Alter Ego losses against Onik, against Bigatron Alpha, 2-0. When Nino gets shut down in the drafts or in the game itself, it's very hard for the team to really find that stability. Not to mention also that Rossi has been learning. I think this Romer was a... I think at the start was one of the problems as to why Alter Ego were, not find, uh, were failing, right? because of his very shallow hero pool. But I think they have learned to play with their strengths, giving, uh, you know, Rassi a bit more of these reactive roamers, like the Diggy, the Estes, even the Florin, similar to Venus's uh, picks. But I think with that, it's still very one-dimensional. It's still, you know, very easily exploited in the draft. And I think that's what a lot of these teams have been doing, just limiting Rassi's picks and forcing him onto heroes that he's not comfortable with. Sometimes it has worked out, though, like the Atlas pick that really worked out for Alter Ego up against Geek Slate. But overall, I do feel like even though they have star players, yes, Udil, Pai, Sully Boy, they're all really good. It still mainly comes down to Nino, if he's able to carry or not. And because Bigatron Alpha are just way more multidimensional, I will say, and have more weapons to utilize in the draft and in the game itself, I'll have to say Bigatron Alpha takes the first match right here. In a pretty convincing manner, I would say, right? I will also be predicting the scores, um, my dudes, also, okay? So, in case you don't know, we'll be predicting the scores, too. Let me just get the, get this. Uh, there you go. Give me a second. Boom, okay. So, we're going to give it... I think they are going to be able to take this in a pretty convincing manner. Manner. I think 3-1 is the way they'll be able to beat Alter Ego. And I think that's pretty solid. I think Alter Ego still gets a game down, still shows their strength, but yeah. I Alter Ego have also not have had like they they haven't had the best track record when it comes down to the playoffs. I think season six was the only one where they really season six and eight, right? Uh yeah. That, that's when they actually found a lot of success going into for Alter Ego, third place, I believe, in season... No, fourth place in season eight. And season six, they were second place. Unfortunately, this is where they end in my prediction. Obviously, everything can change. Uh, with Nafari and ours, maybe they will be able to outthink Ray's boy and Paulo and Aldo. Next on the... on the This is going to be tough, man. It's another tough match. Oh, my gee. Okay. 
another tough match, boys and girls. This is Geek Slate versus Evos Legends. Okay, this one's going to be another toughie. Uh, let's talk a little bit of Geek Slate, about Geek Slate first, right? You know what? No, actually, for these two teams, I would say they're quite similar because for these two teams, they are very inconsistent, right? I think Geek Slate have been more consistent than Evos Legends, but... Still, it doesn't change the fact that Geek Slate have been very inconsistent. They will lose or they will win games against RRQ. They will be very competitive against Onik, and then they will lose to Alter Ego. And then they will like get smashed by Bigatron Alpha. Very weird from Geek Slate. Uh, and from Evil Legends, it's kind of the same too. Beating uh, a lot of these, you know, really good teams. Like uh, even no, I think for Evos, it's a bit. Geek State have beaten like the top teams and have given competitions to the top teams. Meanwhile, for Evos Legends, mainly they have been losing against top teams but winning against lower tier teams, right? So, I think that's where the, like they have a similarity. They're both inconsistent, but for Evos, the inconsistency is, makes more sense because they lose against you know the higher ranked teams and they lose to or they lose to the higher ranked teams. They win against the lower tier teams. I would say, though, when it comes to their highs, too, or the way they play, Geek Slate is a bit more multidimensional. Sure, you can say Beloy is the center of Geek Slate, and he truly is. He still, he still is the, you know, the main guy. He is the guy from Geek Slate. He's the dude that you want to look at. Uh, but I think that's very... Um, if you want to say that it all centers around Beloy and everything just comes down to Beloy, I don't think that's the case anymore for season 11. Maybe in the season 10, I, I would agree. I think if Beloy performs, he wins. If he doesn't, it's gone, right? But in season 11, everybody has really stepped up. A boy has stepped up. Chidera, Luke, and Janna. All these four members have uh, been playing absolutely phenomenal. And every single time Beloy doesn't play well, if he underperforms, the team is there to back him up. Similarly to how he backs up the team when they underperform. And I think that's why I'm going to have to give the Geek Slate. Because for Evos Legends, I think they are very one-dimensional. I really hope this changes, by the way. Uh, I really hope this changes in the playoffs. And I really hope I'm wrong here. Because I would love to see this Evos Legends line up. You know, prove me wrong. And, you know, show the prove the world wrong. Because Evos have a lot of haters for some reason. Um, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Filipino haters because they benched Lar. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Evos, I think in their drafts as well, have been very shaky. Uh, they are very brand centric in the regular season. When they win, it's brands. When they lose, it's brands, right? If brands gets caught, if brands gets targeted, if brands loses in lane, they lose. If brands wins, if brands pops off, if brands carries a team, they win the game. And that's kind of the, why he has 55 points in the regular season, right? Uh, I still think he deserves the regular season MVP, but here, if they don't change, this is going to be like a, I think Geek Slate absolutely like destroys Evo's Legends if they don't change that. If they do change that, A, it's going to be a very scary, very, very scary. Wait. There you go. It's going to be a very scary Geek Slate. Oops, I accidentally said, uh, typed in 33. There you go. I think here it's going to be 3-1-2. Uh, I think it's going to be 3-1. I think this is going to be the scoreline for this match. Uh, moving on, though. <laughs> I got another big match. Oh, my God. All the all these matches are big matches, dude. Like, in the playoffs, really, almost... It, it's 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 going to be so fun. I can't wait for the playoffs to start. And if you guys haven't already... Or if you guys are in Jakarta, please do buy the tickets and watch in the venue. Uh, you know, it's going to be great. Uh, the atmosphere in Indonesia is amazing. The ticket link is going to be down below, uh, close to the voting link. So if you guys want to vote, you can do that as well. Now, okay. Let's move on to Bigatron versus RRQ. RRQ, let's talk about RRQ first because we've already mentioned Bigatron Alpha. RRQ are the most consistent team in the world. I That's, yes, I think... RQ are the most consistent team in the world, and I don't think that's a debate. You can hate RQ, you can be an RQ hater, you can really just be a person who heavily like uh, who just doesn't like RQ. But you cannot deny that they are the most consistent team in Mobile Legends. Literally, in esports, in, in Mobile Legends esports. They made it to all the M World Championships. Second place in M1, third place in M2, sixth place in M3. 
third place in M4. They are constantly a contender for these titles, even when a lot of people have doubted them, even when a lot of people count them out in M4. Everybody thought Onik were going to be the better team compared to RQ. Like, RQ, there's no way they beat Onik. Guess what? They smashed Onik, right? Uh, and that just shows the level of consistency that they have. And even in the regular season here, with the loss of R7, I thought RQ would really... I, I still think RQ has weakened... Um, you know, because of R7's departure, but they somehow, some way, have found that stability, and they are still that consistent team that has constantly been able to pop off, right? Uh, in the regular season, I think that's where it's very, very evident. Like, they're really good. Sure, there were some games where it didn't look good for them, but hey, securing upper brackets despite one of the, your star players, um, you know, retiring is a massive plus. Now, however, after saying that, I have to say RQ are very or too one-dimensional now in the way they play. I think Albert has been put into these, um, you know, very safe junglers where he cannot pop off anymore. The Fredrin, the Atlas, it's just these heroes constantly. We rarely see him get placed on the Hayabusa. When he does, it really feels like, you know, because he's played so much utility in the recent, you know, times that his Hayabusa isn't as crazy as it was before, right? Uh, his assassins in general. Meanwhile, for Bigatron, I feel like Super Ken has been the, you know, the jungler that has really shocked all of us. And again, Bigatron have so many ways of carrying the game. Meanwhile, for RQ, I would say it completely lies on Skyler and maybe Clay, right? Skyler also, he can carry the game, but only on certain heroes. If you give him the Beatrix, if you give him the Claude, mainly Claude though, if you give him any other hero, he kind of struggles, right? So the hero pool can be very easily exploited. Do I think they're do I think they're gonna be, you know, fixing that or trying to repair that? Obviously. Obviously, they will try to repair that, the, the mistakes that we saw in the regular season. But I still believe that, you know, Bigatron Alpha has more tools to play with. And with their uh, impeccable draft almost every single time their drafts have been amazing, I honestly think they will be able to take RQ down. You might say bias, but looking at the statistics, looking at how RQ has performed, and looking at Bigatron's last match against RQ, I think, you know, that's what we've seen, literally. And yeah, there you go. Bigatron Alpha going to the next stage of the upper brackets. Meanwhile, RQ are going to be sent down below. Let's move them first before we move to the next topic, or the next, before we move to the next team. Okay, there you go. RQ down. Bigatron there. Next match, match four. Onik versus Geek Slade. This is where we can all agree. This is, I think, doesn't need much explanation. Whenever it's Onik, they have the Indonesian all-star team, I would say. They have the best team. I think, for me, they have the best XP laner. The, you know, debatable as to the best roamer, because Beloy is there too. I think Beloy and Keyboy, they're the two best roamers in the league. And then they have Sans. I think the, the, the fact is he is the best mid laner in Indo. Gold lane, the best weak side gold laner in Indo. And the best jungler, I would say. Maybe even in the world. <laughs> it's a bold statement, but Kyrie is really good. And yeah, uh, they are just complete. Even in the coaching staff, Yeb's drafts have been so solid. I even uh, voted for him for best coach for you know the season because I feel like he has been the best coach this season in terms of drafts. I think the way they do it is going to be 3-1. I think Geek State will still be able to, you know, do a bit. They will still be able to take a game off of them. Heck, it might even be 3-2, considering Geek State's level of improvement, especially in, like, the playoff structure. And this kind of, like, the bracket structure, Geek State really performs, right? Uh, top clans and also MPLI. Both these tournaments, they were able to get all the way to the Grand Finals in a very dominant way. Sure, they didn't end up winning, but it's still a very impressive uh, run from Geek Slate in every single one of the bracket tournaments. And for Geek Slate this season, I think they are stronger than ever. I think this is going to be this is the strongest Geek Slate we've seen of all time, right? I mean, the reference isn't really the reference that we have from the prior Geek Slates haven't really been too good, so it <laughs> doesn't really say much, but yeah, Geek Slate have been amazing this season. Next match is match five. Oh my god, dude. RQ and Geek. Okay. This is gonna be so tough, dude. 
Okay. Man, 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 man. I think, again, Geek have been so creative with Beloy. The way that they've have been playing, it feels like a, if, you know, um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll just say it. I think it feels very much like a PH team. Maybe because their, their captain is a Filipino, right? Now, what I mean by that is the fact that when they are behind, they are not afraid of making plays. Sure, RQ does that too. They're not afraid of making plays when they're behind. But Geek Slate, when they're behind, they are so aware that they are behind. They farm up. They trade. They don't just they don't just gamble in these team fights. Go on to it every single time when they lose the first objective or they when when they have um, you know a gold deficit. They trade first, get their winning condition, get their main carry into a position where he can pop off, and then Beloy makes that call, the call that can make or break the game. But in a situation with, when you are losing, you need to make those you need to make those decisions to turn the game around. And Geek Slate have consistently been able to make that play happen with Beloy's calls. In the playoffs, I think that's going to be enhanced even more. There's more pressure on the players, but for Beloy, he's such a seasoned veteran that he will still be able to make these plays happen. And that level of creativity is really what sets good teams apart from you know from other good great teams apart from good teams. There you go. Sounds better. RQ, though, are still amazing. I think the lack of R7 is going to hurt them a bit in the playoffs. In the regular season, it was covered up a bit. But here, in a full best of five, when the pressure is on, Banana is a new player. He's not a new player when you look at when he joined. He's not making his debut in the playoffs. He's not making his debut in season 11. He made his debut uh, sometime, some time ago, right? But I still think it's really going to affect the way he plays and the way the RQ plays as a whole. XP is such an important role. And for that reason, no. I, I baited you guys. You guys thought, oh, Geek are gonna go. Or RQ are gonna go. No. Um, no. I think Geek are gonna make it, guys. I, I think Geek are gonna make it. Or I think Geek are gonna knock RQ out. <laughs> as crazy as it might look, as it might seem, this is what I think is gonna happen. My god. This would be crazy. This is, this is, yeah, this is absolutely crazy. If this ends up being real, if this ends up being true, it's going to be the best playoffs ever. The way they do it, though, I will also have to say 3 2. I think RQ are still one of the strongest teams. And their consistency is something that everybody needs to be careful of because Geek Slate, even though they're good, even though they've had higher highs this season in their performances, I would say are very inconsistent, right? And RQ's consistency could just eat that up. We'll see. Big Sean Onik, again. I'm sorry, man. Every single time I see an Onik game, an Onik match, it's just, I don't know if you guys um, feel the same way, but they're just levels ahead of the pack. I, I, I honestly feel like every team right now are battling for second place. They're not battling for first place. I think first place is almost guaranteed uh, from Onik. Almost, right? Obviously, anything can happen in the playoffs, but Onik have just been so good that they've just been, they look untouchable, honestly. They lost one match against RQ, but yeah, that's it. Like, and in that match too, I feel like there were some inconsistencies that were happening within the team. Like the way they were playing too was very weird and RQ on the day was just popping off constantly, right? I think here... Ah oh, man, it's so painful because I support this team, but hey, if it happens, it happens, man. I honestly feel like it's gonna. I I don't want to give uh, Bigatron a zero, so I'll give them a one. But it, a three zero could definitely happen here. Oh my god, a three zero could definitely happen. Like Onik have had Bigatron's number almost every single time. Like one. Onic 2-0 BTR. Leg 2, Onic 2-0 BTR. Nothing has changed. <laughs> so maybe something will change in the playoffs. I really hope so. But nah, like right now, I think Onic are the strongest team. They are... Bigatron are like a mini Onic, I would say. Bigatron have like kind of the same formula as Onic. Same kind of play style as well. But they're... It's just like a, a version that hasn't reached the Onic peak yet. Now, oh my goodness gracious. Bigatron versus Geek. It's... Oh, dude. This is such a tough one, man. 
Because I support both of these teams, dudes. I support both of these teams. Here, I support Bigatron. I'm a Bigatron fan. I would love a Geek jersey. But <laughs> but Geek Slate, also, so much respect. Uh, big shout out, by the way, to the social media team or the admin for Geek Slate. Because they always use the English desk, uh, the English broadcast for their highlights on TikTok. And for, I think, most of their highlights, even on YouTube. So shout out to Geek Slate. I love Geek Slate. I would love your jersey. Um, they were also one of the few teams that actually like first um, appreciated the talents, I would say, uh, the newer talents, because they actually gave us, me and all the other junior talents back in season seven, a Geek Slate mug. And back then it was Geek Fam and a Geek Fam shirt with, uh, with glasses on it, like the Geek Slate glasses. And it was so cool. I wore it all the time. Unfortunately, it was it got too small for me because <laughs> I gained some weight since then. But yeah, uh, both these teams I really love. Bigatron Alpha, you guys know it. I don't even need to explain, like, I'm literally wearing a Bigatron Alpha jersey. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, oh, dude. You know what? No, no, no. Let's, let's change this first. No, no, no. One, okay? Not zero. Okay, let's just change that real quick. <laughs> um, oh, my God. BTR versus Geek. Also, just I, this is this has nothing to do with Bigatron versus Geek. It's just a fun little story that I want to give you guys uh, about Beloy. Beloy, I I love this dude so much ever since M three because he was such a kind dude. He's so kind. Him and Delar, the whole Onic PH gang, they were all so kind. Even Yeb, man, uh, just Onic PH were the kindest team to me or to all, everyone. I would say uh, in at M three. I remember me and the boys, me and the other casters, we were in the lobby waiting for a grab to go and watch Spider-Man No Way Home. And Onyx PH were just going, we were just coming back from a match that they that they played. Uh, the whole crew came in, and uh, Beloy, out of nowhere, just was like, "Yo, Mirko, I gotta say, man, your casting is unbelievable. Like, you're so young, and your casting is so good." Blah blah. blah. And I was like, "Whoa, bro, I didn't expect that. Like, I didn't expect." Uh, yeah, it was very heartwarming for me, especially in that situation at M3 when I was going through, you know, kind of a tough time. It was uh, it was great. And uh, Beloy ever since has, you know, been one of my favorite players. And uh, yeah, he's a very kind soul here against Bigatron, though. I honestly still feel like Bigatron Alpha has the edge here in this, in this match. Bigatron Alpha in their last match as well against Geek Slate were really able to exploit... Geek Slate's, um, you know, weak points in the way they drafted. The Valentina ban is crucial against Geek Slate because of how they can flex it uh, in, into three roles. Even here, I think Bigatron Alpha have the formula to beat Geek Slate. They've beaten Geek Slate 2-0 in the second leg with their performance and with their very flexible composition for Bigatron Alpha and the way that they can play. Meanwhile, for Geek Slate, it's still... Very multidimensional as well, in my opinion, with Luke and um, Chidera stepping up, and even a boy. I would still say Geeks Bigatron takes this, though. You know what? I will say Bigatron takes this. At this point, when it comes down to like the the last few matches, it's more of like a, it's more of a, it's not much analysis, you know. Like the last few matches here, it's I think it has to do more with feeling because uh, there's really no way you can fully predict like what's gonna happen based on like analyzing maybe you can say miracle there's a bit of bias here there's a little bit of copium here maybe you're right hey maybe you're right but, but hey any team any one of these teams if they make it to the grand finals i'll be happy as long as there's some you know because i honestly feel if you ask me in my streams if you ask me wherever if you ask me now even which team are you supporting in the playoffs i'll say bigatron alpha and geek slate I want two new teams to represent Indonesia for MSC. I want to see two new teams in an, in the international stage. But I think the way Onik are playing, they're a bit too strong for that to happen. One new team is good enough. And I think it's going to be Bigatron Alpha. I think their performance, there's no way to deny it. Sure, maybe you disagree with my, uh, with my you know, prediction here, but you cannot deny how good Bigatron Alpha have become in the second leg, they have literally like stomped through everyone. 2 0 even Geek Slate, right? Here. Welcome to another very like um I don't know. Do do I say like it's I don't know about this chat. Like it's very hard to to, 
I think Onik are just miles ahead of the pack, dudes. I don't know if you guys agree. Maybe you have a different opinion, but... And, and you guys definitely should let me know what you think is going to happen because this is what I think is going to happen. I think for the Grand Finals, it's the least amount of like... I think Big Turn Alpha will, will still be able to put out put, put up a fight in the Grand Finals, but uh, similarly to how they were able to put up a fight in the final upper bracket though, it's going to be a fight, but it's not going to be like a super close game. Maybe it will. Hopefully it is. I really hope we get to see a 4-3 Grand Finals because since Season 6, it's been just stompy Grand Finals almost every single season. I really hope Pikachuan or whoever makes it to the Grand Finals gives Onik a tough time. But yeah, this is my prediction, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys enjoy the prediction. If you guys did, leave a comment down below. If you agree, disagree, let me know what you think about your own predictions. Let me know who you think is going to win MPL Indonesia Season 11. Who wins every single match, maybe. You know, tell me why your team is the strongest. Tell me everything that you think. Even if you disagree here, even if you want to leave some hate, please do hate in the comment section because I would love the, um, I'd love the extra algorithm points technically with more comments like i think my video gets recommended more so please do like love share hate the comment i don't care just just interact with the video in whatever way you can like the video if you guys enjoy subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more of this because i will be uploading playoff vlogs every single day amen hopefully i can keep up with um with the schedule if i'm not too tired because uh yeah i have a lot of double shift days uh in mpl playoffs i really hope i can get through it and with the play, with the vlogs as well. If I can't, then I will just postpone it uh, a bit later. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Also, if you guys haven't already voted, go ahead and vote. MPO Indonesia Season 11 nominations for awarding is still down. You can vote for it in the description and the comment section. I'll be leaving a link where you can vote, preferably for this guy right here. Amen. We can get, you know, that trophy. We can get two. We, we already have two of those. We can make it three. <laughs> we can make a hat trick for you and the me. For us. For us. Okay? But yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section because this is what I think is going to happen. And look at my track record. Season 9, MPL ID, RQ, predicted. Season 10, predicted, Onik. Season 11, I think it might be the same. Peace out.